In this video, we are going to make an automated chicken coop door. There are a lot of chicken coop door solutions on the internet, but this one allows you to use your phone to set up a schedule and you could operate the door remotely. According to Google Trends, a lot of people have been interested in chicken coops since the start of the pandemic. If you're one of these people, you may forget to open your coop door one morning and nobody wants to come home to a pissed off bird. To get started, we took some measurements of the coop door and then made a mock-up. Here's the finished mock-up of our chicken coop. Door works great, I think it's good to go. These are all the components we need for this build. First, we have the smart garage door opener, the eight inch 12 volt linear actuator, the 12 volt five amp power supply, the dual relay controlled by Arduino, the power regulator and the Arduino Nano. The smart garage controller allows us to operate the door remotely and the app actually has decent reviews. Setting up the smart garage door controller on your phone was actually pretty easy. Just a couple minutes and everything will be done. I really like that you can rename it to something else other than garage door and assign an appropriate icon. You could also connect it to your Amazon Alexa if you want to. I played around with the app for a little bit and it's actually very responsive. It'll instantly tell you if the door is opening or if it's closed. First thing we had to do was understand how this device communicates to a garage door. By commanding the controller to open or close the garage door, we can see that the output is shorted for two seconds. Understanding this will allow us to trick it into thinking it's operating a garage door. So the theory of operation is this. If the controller is on for two seconds, our controller will latch the output high. This will cause the door to open. And then again, if the controller is on for another two seconds, our controller will latch the output low and the door should close. Now it's time to choose our project box. We need this to protect all the components from the weather. For the cables coming out of the box, I installed some waterproof cable glands. Now for the wiring. For this project, we only had to use two inputs and two outputs. It looks a bit more complicated with the power, but this is how everything will connect. Since the smart garage door controller is also powered by 120 volts, I wanted to share the power coming into the power supply. Next, I connected directly to the controller for the garage door close sensor. Then I wired up the relays. These relays will allow us to reverse the power going to the linear actuator motor. Lastly, I wired up the Arduino with the two inputs, the door sensor and the two second switch, and the two outputs, the relay control and the blinking LED. Before closing the lid, I put the Arduino in heat shrink tubing to give it a better chance of survival. And that is it for our project box. On to mounting our linear actuator. One issue I ran into was there wasn't enough room for this bracket. So I decided to use it in reverse. Only problem is there'll have to be some slight modifications to it in order for this to work. Uh, not the cleanest cut in the world, but my measurements were right and this does seem to work better. Normally I wouldn't have done this, but the door is so light I think it will be okay. One thing I'm really happy about are these mounts that I made. I've made these in Fusion 360 and on the Ender 3 V2 printer. They came out really nice. The reason I made these is because my sister's door for the chicken coop is very thin. It's only a quarter inch thick. So these will allow extra bite into that door with uh, these six extra wood screws and I have two bolts holding this mount on for the linear actuator. Also built a cool little platform for the sensor, for the garage door sensor to know when the garage door is closed, in this case, you know, the coupe door. And I built another one for the rear mount on the linear actuator. Uh, this one again has six screws to bite into it, a little lip because there's uh, a piece of trim that this would have to fit on top of, but overall same concept. Uh, I think these are gonna be really secure and built another mount 
on the receiver side and if this is correctly measured they should line up perfectly together when the door is closed. So excited to see if this actually works. So here's the mock-up of our chicken coop door. Door closed this way, open this way. With our new mounts really easy to mount this up so this goes right on the edge of this door and our rear mount goes up against the trim on this side there's a little cutout of, for the trim and it mounts there so with these two mounted and our receiving sensor butts up against that pretty nicely can now mount our actuator. Our actuator will go on obviously like this, like this, and then we're ready to do some tests. So these mounts didn't work very well mounted at the top of the door. I had to move them down whenever it was pushing the door would get all I guess and get jammed up and the linear actuator is strong enough it would just rip the, these right off so especially with cardboard so I move them to the middle and it works a lot better so one of the nice things about a linear actuator design is that they're very strong this one can push over 200 pounds and if it's in the locked or closed position it's virtually impossible to open up the chicken coop door without damaging something. Another nice thing about it is if the actuator dies or the controller stops working, it's easy for a human to open the door. All they have to do is remove the pin and they can lift the actuator out of the way. But then you can operate the, the door as normal. So you can circumvent it if you needed to, if the actuator breaks, which is nice. Finally, for some testing, you can see that the application says the door is closed because it is. And when we try to open it, the actuator starts to move and we get an indication on our phone or a notification on our phone saying that the chicken door is open or opening. The actuator moves very slowly at almost a half an inch per second. This is good because it gives enough time for any chickens to get out of the way. Close it. Same thing. Pulling the switch. In this next scenario, I'm going to unplug it while the door is closed, simulating we lost power at night or something. When we do plug it back in, the motor moves a little bit, but it also stays closed. It doesn't reopen. All right, for this test, see it's almost 3 o'clock. I'm going to set a schedule to open the door at 3.01. Yep, that's correct. And what I'm going to do now is turn off my phone and see if the schedule still works. So I'll turn my phone off now. All right, and we'll wait and see. Wow. So I think that's a really cool feature. If you set the schedule on your phone or the timer, to close or open the door, it'll still work even if your phone is turned off or loses battery power. So for the final part, I'm going to put on this nice little logo. My sister came up with this clever name called Leather Cluckers Exit Door. So I'm just gonna put a clear coat on that. So that's it for this build. Only thing left to do is to pack this up and send it to my sister. Okay, so we're doing our fit test. It fits just perfectly in the center. So my next step is to take off the painter's tape and screw it into the door. Okay, this side is installed. <laughs> Eliza's helping. So with Peggy. And now I'm holding this up to 
see where to go for this side. Okay, so I installed the right side of the arm. That little nail I need to get pushing on the inside of the door because when I push on it, the door pushes. So we'll fix that guy later. So I run into the first hurdle where if I get this lined up here, the nails are past the board. So I'm gonna find some longer nails and maybe we can make it work. Okay, I found two wood screws that were longer. Uh, kinda had a little boo-boo, and I put it near the seam and it cracked the wood a little bit, but it'll stay, it'll hold. So hopefully that's close enough. You checking this out? What do you think about that? About your new door? Your new curfew? You're gonna have a curfew now. You're gonna have to get in on time. That is all for this build and thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, you could put them in the comments below and I will respond to all of them. You can also email me if you prefer at jason.altus at codemixitgo. Remember, all of the links to all the items that you saw here and the source code are in the description too. Thanks a lot. Bye.